but she really has the audacity to tell me to go clean the stove. Like, I'm her. It's like, what the? F So I got my food here. We're gonna do a mukbang story time. Okay, okay. So let me tell you what I ordered. Got a peach lemonade. This is all from Wendy's. Okay. No, I got um. So my homeboy got the order wrong, which is fine. It happens. I originally wanted a chili with like fries on the side and then just four nuggets, but he got chili cheese fries. And the four nuggets. But we're just gonna make it, okay? It's our cheat day. Alright, guys. I'm gonna say still? Like, why are we doing like that? I'll say that. Okay. If you're eating, get your food ready too. Okay, it's like ready. We got the uh, chili cheese fries. You know what I'm saying? Fun fact: I didn't eat meat for two years. So, if you want to start telling that, I got you. Mm. All right, guys. So, if you clicked on today's video, this is going to be a story time mukbang video. I'm sorry I don't have the food out in front of you because I'm kind of just sitting on the edge of the bed and holding my food. This is a story time of... Hold on. Because because Just because we're doing a mukbang don't mean we gotta talk with food in our mouth. Just be cute about it. <laughs> but, enough rambling. So, today's story time is about the time that I dealt with the rudest customer I've ever dealt with in my whole life. Like... I literally like I had to pause just to remember that I hated her that much like she was just so rude for no reason like nothing provoked her to be rude she kind of just came in with an attitude and um we we're gonna talk about that and how I felt and how she was dealt with I don't know how y'all film these videos like I just want to eat like I just want to eat or I just want to talk I just want to do one of the one of the two I was a cashier at this place. Now I have to give you a lot of um, background info, kind of, just so you can understand relationships in this story time, and so you can understand like what was going on, who is who, what is what. So I was coming from college. I think I was coming from college, and then I decided to do community college for one year. I don't know if this is around that time, but pay close attention to the details, okay? I'm gonna put the food down so that we can get our point across. So, right? Me, still a college student, still am right now, but anyways, this was a few years back. So, before I got this job, okay, I was a hostess at a restaurant. A lot of people know it locally. It's really cool. They play live jazz music and blah, blah, blah. I worked there for a while and it was actually right in front of my house. So, I could just like, and my shifts was always like five to midnight. Um, or like 9 or 10 um, and literally this is the place this is my house and I would just be like doo -doo, no problem you know my mom was like whatever my mom was strict so she was like it's fine I know where you are like just get your money and come home and if anything were to happen she could just call the restaurant right or just go inside so I was a hostess at the time and at the time I had two managers I really have to say the first woman's name but she's cool people it's like she just doesn't matter in the story right now um, but I had two managers the second manager is the person that's going to be important in the story, okay? The second manager, we're going to call him Robert, okay? Robert, you know, was a great manager. I feel like me and Robert were much closer than me and the other manager because um, he was just kind of younger and he's kind of more hip. Not saying you aren't sis, you know, because if you watch this video. Me and him were just closer. He was sweet, you know, he's really nice, respectable man. He was with his, um, I don't know if they were engaged at the time or what, but he had his boo and, you know, he loved talking to her about, to me, and just kind of asking for advice. I'm just trying to, like, give you a feel for what Robert is like. Um, I don't know what ended up happening. I think there was a fallout at the restaurant and he ended up getting another job at another food place. So he worked a lot in the food industry, I think, for a while and that's how I met him. So, 
I, you know, when I had to leave the restaurant because I was going to, I was moving the towns. I was moving out of towns, I think it was. Was it then? Yeah. Yeah, I was moving. But then I actually came back, right, to work in the same area, which was kind of dumb. But anyway, I don't know what's good with my memory today. Just such a great manager. Like, I put him down for every referral. Close peoples, right? You know, I needed a job, right? So I obviously hit up Robert because I knew he had the connect. And I knew that he could just kind of get me a job. I kind of just hit up Robert and I was like, hey, like, what's up? Um, where do you work now? You know, whatever. And he's telling me, and I was just like, oh, I kind of like low key need a job, right? And he was just like, oh, well, come work with me. Like, oh, like we got along. He's a manager there, so obviously he's gonna like hire me immediately. So no problems, right? So obviously, at this, um, I'm gonna call it a fast fast food place, but there's like no drive through. It's kind of like Chipotle style, if you consider Chipotle fast food. Is Chipotle considered fast food? I don't know. It was kind of like that. So. He was like, you know, come through, you know, we can get you that job. Oh, I haven't been eating. Yeah, come through. I'm going to do like a fake interview and uh, yeah, we can just sign the papers. And I was like, okay. So, I told my mom, oh, remember so-and-so, like, he's going to hook me up with a job. And she's like, oh my God, that's great. And I got there and I was just telling him like, you know, he was like saying what's available. And he was like, honestly, like, we're going to get you to be registered. If you see me looking now, I'm just trying to get my food on my fork. I don't even know if you can, like, tell. There's, like, cheese on my lip. Because <laughs> I can't see it. They needed cooks and they needed a cashier. And I was just like, I ain't cooking, so I'm going to just do a cashier. So I do a cashier, right? And whatever, we do the fake interview. Although Robert was a manager, he wasn't, like, the only manager. Um, in fact, I think he was, like, assistant manager. Um, so... He didn't have that much control of the situation. Um, and I also didn't really... What did I ask Robert? How much was it going to be? Pay, you know, because obviously I'm not going to sit here and get be, be paid less than when I worked at the other place. And the other place I got paid regular, like, um... The state, you know, like, you know what I mean? The legal amount. Robert was like, yeah, you know, you're going to get paid good, like... Just as much as you got paid that thing the other manager i think he ends up coming up to me or whatever and he was just like yeah um everyone gets paid five dollars no don't think i'm lying because i'm not like that was the craziest thing i've ever heard anyone say to me when you get paid five dollars you get paid five dollars with tips and i was like how much tips am i gonna get to make 12 an hour because that's how much we make in the state that i live in I was like, what the hell? Like, and Robert was like, no, 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 trust me. Like, don't freak out. Like, I get paid five too. Like, it's the tips. So the way that system worked, because I know you're probably curious, and we can get to the point of the story. The way that that worked was they basically, every time someone orders, like, they kind of have to leave a tip. So that way, everyone kind of got their own cut. I thought it was a really unfair process, because obviously some people are working harder than the other ones, but they're all getting the same pay. So I kind of thought that was pretty shitty, um, <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. So now you understand, right? Robert's there. I work there. So me and Robert already have our prior um, work relationship, so I'm cool with him. I'm working the cashier register, whatever. It's been like months that I'm in the restaurant working. Um, it's like a Mediterranean restaurant, so you do have to learn the menu now obviously it's a whole different culture whole different language so i had a lot to learn and i did learn it but there were times where you know some people that can did come in who obviously could tell i was not from the same culture um as them and they kind of would like just be snobby about it kind of rude it's kind of like they knew more than me i mean yes you do but like i don't know it was just they were really rude about it so i don't know what that was all about but like you know, I would always act like I never presented myself in a way where I was like, No, it's called this. Because obviously if I go to a Dominican restaurant, right? And there's a white man working and, and I'm like, hey, dame do patelito. And he's like, it's pastelito. I never would have done Like, I never did that. You know what I mean? So I was just saying what I was taught, what I was trained to do. There was like one thing I'll say. There's something called labne or labne. I'll put a picture on the screen. If you're Mediterranean and watching this, shout out to you. I love Labni. 
I'm loving it, whatever. But you know, yeah, people would be like, try to um, correct me nicely. And you had your fair share of people that would just laugh like, <clears throat> what the hell did she just say? Like I said, Robert's here. And then we have our rude ass manager. Now, it's important to note, I've not fucked this manager. This manager was rude as hell. For all I care, I don't care what he's doing now. If he, I think his pregnant, his wife was pregnant at the moment. I don't care about your wife or you. He was just rude. Rude as hell. And when the owner of the business came, honestly, and it wasn't a franchise, so if I'm saying that right, which means I think there, like, it was just one location in the whole state. So they're like a new business, and they were looking to open up to different places. Now, when I work a new job. I like to make connections with the managers and with my coworkers, especially the managers, because I feel like if you have an awkward relationship with your manager, it's just really weird. You kind of don't want to go to work. And it just kind of naturally happens for me where my managers kind of become close to me and they confide in me and they kind of treat me like a friend and then they're like, oh. We can't meet. We get, you're not a manager, so we really can't meet. Kiki and like this right now. At this point, why am I not a manager? Like, I've had so many jobs. I have so many manager friends, like, just plug me in, period. I'm tired of this. So like I said, yeah, let me stop eating for a minute. The manager, the other one, was a dickhead. He was so rude. Um, He, like, kissed the owner's feet. He would, like, bend the rules for customers. And obviously, you look like a dickhead when you tell a customer, no, we can't do this accommodation for you. And then he's like, yes, we can do this accommodation for you, especially for you. Like, don't fucking do that. Like, I hate when people do that, especially in the food industry. You gotta know when to choose whose side and especially in situations like situations like this you just oh, anyway let me let me get into this tea like i said it was a few days working at the restaurant a few months and it was like a regular day it was really slow um just so you can get more of a picture too of that rude manager he said to me one time the just so you know the cooks right so the cooks that worked there they were all latino men hispanic men and they so they spoke mostly spanish um their english was pretty broken so i speak spanish right you know whenever they needed help or translation or if the manager was kind of talking like they kind of be like what what did he say you know i think they were guatemalan so they had that certain type of spanish versus mine so even then like even our spanish would clash and we kind of wouldn't know what we were saying to each other but that's not here nor there so just so you can kind of get a picture of the rude ass manager one time he goes, he had an accent, he just has his accent or whatever, he's just like, you know, um, when you're talking to those guys, please don't, don't do that, that thing. And I'm like, what, what? Don't speak Spanish. When there's custom, like, don't do that, that's just like, we don't do that here. And, and, I just got hot thinking about it again, cause like, how dare you? Don't fucking tell me what to do when you have your customers come in and y'all talk in y'all language. Don't do that. Like, no one's in. Like, I think he was just insecure, cause I thought he thought we were talking, cause the guys just always laughed anyway at anything I said, cause we were just laughing, cause we didn't know what the hell we were saying to each other most of the time. So I think he was insecure about that. And yeah, and I was just like, I was like, they need to understand me, so I'm not. I'm gonna speak Spanish and I told the um I told Robert that he was like man f him like what is he talking about talk to him how you want to ignore him he's a hater you know so whatever all right so that's just kind of so you can see how fucked up that guy was like he was a dickhead <laughs> okay so uh, I'm just trying to like explain to you guys how much I hated that guy like when the owner would come and the owner had a rule and the owner was like slow as hell to I don't even care if they watch this like they treated me like sh there and they were just so rude like ugh. the owner would be asking for requests that like requests that you yourself said we couldn't do but i have to do it for you because oh, it's your business like come on like don't treat me like shit and think i'm gonna treat you like cordially and stuff like i don't like that you know whatever and he would yell at you the owner would yell at you if you did something wrong and it was rush hour like no respect i have no respect for those people <laughs> and i know they don't have none for me so anyway, that was the kind of dynamic that was going on there, right? So it was just one regular day, and it wasn't rush time. You know, if you work in a, like, Chipotle kind of setting, you know that there's a rush time. Um, and, I mean, even as a customer, you guys know you walk in Chipotle, there's, like, a whole long-ass line. And you're like, um, hello, why did I come so late, right? So that wasn't happening at the time. And so we're all kind of just chilling. Robert and me are just chatting up. We're cooking up. He's telling me about his girl, 
yada yada and it was like oh my god that's so sweet you know whatever we're talking about school blah 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 and oh and i'm talking about my boy problems like that's the kind of relationship we had like he was like a brother to me you know we're chilling we're chatting up obviously when a customer comes in you kind of gotta dead that and kind of like separate um so i'm at the register like i said and there was like a the labney bar the yogurt um or cheese i don't know what they would call it but my manager then someone walks in right and my manager's like oh you know and then we, we split apart because obviously there's a customer inside this woman comes in all right here's where the the climax of the story comes this woman comes in you gonna eat with me okay this woman comes in with her sister and her mom's right that's what it looked like it's a lady that looked like an older version of her and then a woman that looked like the younger version of her right so i'm like okay this is my mom and sister situation they looked pretty nice i don't you know i always have a smile for customers because i don't really i don't have a bias like i don't really do that even if customers come in with like, this big ass stink face i don't really do that because like that's just how i know i know when i walk into the place every week is stink till i talk so i was like whatever so she kind of had like a little stink face or whatever and i was like okay whatever like hey welcome to the thing um can i take your order and she was like and i was like okay you know and i gave her that benefit of the doubt because i know we had a very big menu now the way that their menu was set up was pretty annoying everyone complained about it everyone hated it everyone that came in was like um because can i just like go down the line and choose what i want because it set up like chipotle there was that expectation people wanted to just go choose what they want and that's it and it was like the same thing it was like a line you know you got your register and then you got the food so sometimes people would even come in and start at the food but they're actually supposed to start at the register with me so she's like um can i have a minute and i was like oh yeah yeah sure okay um i give them menus right because they gotta look at it you know she's like How is this back? you know we just like with an attitude and i was just like okay and i'm just explaining her you know tell me what you want um we can't do that many accommodations you choose this first you choose your rice your meat your your salad you know it's like that kind of thing and your sides and she was like okay all right and like i guess she's translating to her peoples behind her and so she's translating whatever and she goes up to the guys over there and she's like trying to talk to them and, and then he looks at me like can you leave hold you know like what she say and she's like what like i'm talking to you and he was like he's like he's like i don't know like i don't know because he's like i don't know what you're saying like i and i was like oh like you gotta ask me he kind of really like he doesn't really understand english <clears throat> and she was like okay what the heck so then she's like she was asking about the meat or whatever or what we use in the meat and i'm explaining to her right guys here's when she copped the biggest attitude okay and this is when she once these things came out of her mouth after that i was like oh i don't like that woman i'm not talking like i don't i don't fuck her i'm not being nice anymore right guys she has a menu in her hand whatever she's like i don't know what happened from that moment to that moment but she goes all right well before i order i'm gonna eat all the other takeout gloves on and put new gloves on and i was like like what the f like no shit. like people that work in the food industry know that number one so watch her tone like she was getting a little hot in the chat okay so obviously after she said that i was like um i was like um my camera died there but <laughs> yeah she was getting a little hot in the chat and i was just like who is you like calm down like no sh we, like it, it was a very offensive thing to say because people that work in the food industry know that it's just very disrespectful it's kind of like telling a bank teller you know they use a the machine account money most of the time i guess um it's kind of like telling a machine teller and when you're done kind of with your hands it's like first of all rude no i'm not gonna count on my hands so she says that and i'm like i'm like yeah we always change our gloves me i didn't even need gloves i was at the register so i touched money i don't touch food and if there were times it was busy where i had to like pre-prep like a bread bowl right which would mean just put my gloves on grab the bread the um pita no it wasn't it was the sash bread and get the hummus and put it on a little bowl slide it down the rack and take my gloves off and that's that right i was very vigilant about that because you're not gonna catch me slipping because i'm not about to play that right so i was like yeah we we change our gloves every time we start a new a new plate new thing don't worry and the way that mirrors were set up they did either bowls or wraps like i said very chipotle style and she kind of proceeds to say after that 
and can y'all like not like ignore what I just said she goes and can y'all like don't f do that that's rude as hell that's just rude as hell like oh my god I'm just getting mad thinking about it all over again but she goes and um can y'all clean up that grill or some, so something like and you can go ahead and go clean that grill too before you put my food on there because I don't want no meat touching it yeah like it was just the way she was requesting it was so rude with an attitude it wasn't very nice it wasn't kind at all and it was like a very do as I say and do as I do like it was like a very attitude thing and I was just like the one she said that after it was kind of like she was saying um you're my bitch and go do what I f***ing say and I don't do, do well with that obviously because number one I don't know you number two I'm in the food industry so I know how to deal with people like this that get hot like that and you kind of have an expectancy to deal with people like that expectation to deal with people like that but you don't really expect it until it happens and when it happens you get hot and heated now when I get mad and I, I hate when I get mad that this happens, but when I get mad, right, my body gets hot, my knees get weak, my ears get re red, my cheeks get red, and I literally have an out-of-body experience. I can shake a little bit, and then sometimes I'll cry because <laughs> I'm that angry, and I literally just gotta let it out, you know, but um, I didn't, right? So let me just tell you what happens, next, right? So my cheeks are getting hot, my ears are getting red, my body's getting hot, and Robert... Okay, we, I'm gonna give y'all another story time, but there's a time where Robert actually beat a customer's ass, okay? Like, scrapped up outside of the restaurant because he don't play that. He don't play that disrespect. Um, at the other restaurant, like, there would be, like, old men, like, I'm talking, like, Drake's dad men, who would try it with me, like, you're so awesome, huh? And I'd be like, ugh, like, what are you doing? Like, ill, you know? And, um, Robert would be like, boss, what's up? Um, can you go grab your seat, please? Thanks, bye. Like, he was, like, my little security guard. So... <sighs> I mentioned this because Robert didn't peep at the time that there was this little attitude going on. And if Robert had peeped, he would have been like, ma'am, is everything okay? You know, before it even escalated. But it, at this point, I feel like it was a little, it was in the middle escalation point. And I just kind of look at her and I pause and I was just like, like, what are you, like, don't, don't talk to me like that, obviously, right? So I look at her and I'm just like, yeah, the stoves get cleaned um after every meal like a wipe we wipe it down we don't actually go in and scrape the f off the pit because it's like those you know those like if you guys ever go to a pizza shop and you see how they make steak and cheese on that like really big thing it's kind of like that um and what mostly went on the thing would be that the burrito the part of the burrito and obviously you have your occasional piece of meat that falls off and it gets scraped to the side and they would clean it like every two hours like a deep clean and obviously at the end of the night is when it gets the biggest deep clean but you have to understand that there is that risk that your food might touch me so I told her like oh it doesn't work like that you know we can't just like do basically a nighttime cleanup for the stove just for you like that's really selfish that like hinders the cooking process like the thing is heated up a certain way for the whole day like it would it would it would you would need to turn it off and like do all this stuff and it was just like a very disrespectful request it's like it wasn't realistic and she was just demanding that in a very hostile way too so that wasn't really kind of her so i was like yeah we can't do that like sorry like what do you want me to tell you and she was like and why not and I was like, I literally told her, like, because we can, like, that's not, you know, it's like, we can try our best to clean it off as well as we can, but we're not, we're not able to shut it off and clean it all over for you. There is that risk of the meat contamination, you know, and they didn't really offer vegan options, I don't think, at the time. So, if you genuinely wanted something vegan, like, you know, me, you had to just kind of more so order a bowl where... You have more control and people can just kind of put your rice and salad and all that in one thing. Whereas the rice and salad doesn't go in the grill where the meat goes. Like, if you guys know where I'm getting at with this, right? So anyway, you know, she was like, and why not? And I'm like, because that's not a thing that we do, whatever. And I'm explaining her. And um, she cuts me off. She's like, where's the manager? Where's the manager? Whatever. And the girls behind her are dying and laughing. And now I'm just like, okay, y'all think I'm funny. Like, this is a joke to you. Like, you think that this disrespecting me is funny. And that's just so disrespectful. So now I'm shaking. Okay. We've reached what? Red ears, red cheeks, shaking, body heat. 
I'm this close to crying because I'm angry, right? And in situations like this, you don't really like, you don't ever look at the customer. He's like, yo, you're being mad rude right now. Like, are you okay? Like, that really doesn't ever happen because it's like, it's just like, what the hell is going on right now? Like, are you really doing this right now? So I really don't expect it. My luck, right? Robert doesn't come in time. You know who comes? Rude manager. And rude manager is like, um, what's the problem? What's the problem, miss? And talking to her, and I guess speak the same language, right? whoop de fing do here it goes, right? So while they're speaking their language, and she's doing one of these, and she's pointing at me like this, and this, and that, and, and them, and this, and, and the guys are next to me like, ¿Qué ya está diciendo? Like, ¿Qué, ¿Qué hay? Like, what's the problem? You know, whatever. And I'm just like, she's just fucking rude. Like, she has a big ass attitude, and he's like, uh, like, uh, whatever, like. Fuck her, like, she's fucking rude, like, uh, we don't give a fuck, like, I'll spit in her food right now, like, <laughs> type of energy. And, excuse me if I have chili in my mouth, I'm just trying to get the story wrapped up. And, you know, basically I can see that they're talking or whatever, and I call Robert over, and I'm like, um, I need to step out and take a moment, okay? And Robert's like, okay, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. And then when I come, I go out, call my grandma, and I'm going off. I'm like, yo, she really has the audacity to tell me to go clean the stove. Like, I'm her b Like, what the f I obviously didn't swear at my grandma, but I was just angry. I was like, don't. Like, it's just so rude to come into a food establishment just doing shit like that. Like, it's like coming into Chipotle and be like, all of y'all refill all these shits right now. New rice, new beans, new fajitas. Like, who is you? Like, watch this though. So, Robert let me have my moment, and then I come back, and I explain to Robert what happened, right? And she's still there. And she's kikiing with the rude manager or whatever. Well, I don't know what ended up happening. I don't know what, what she ended up eating or whatever. I'm pretty sure the manager explained to her, yeah, you know, we clean the shit later in the day, like, a little bit throughout the day, but, like, officially, officially, they clean at the end of the day, so we really can't do that. But I can probably give you a discount, blah, 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 blah. Right? So when I come back, <clears throat> she's ordering to the men. And I'm like, I'm like, you can't, I'm like, miss, <clears throat> I'm like, miss, you know, you can't order down there. And at this point, Robert's kind of standing nearby just to make sure things are good. I'm like, oh, miss, you have to order with me. She was like, no, the manager said it was fine. I'm going to order here. And I'm like, all right, at this point, fuck that, fuck you. Like, if you want to get your food fucked up because these guys don't understand you, then that's fine. Like, fine, go ahead. I don't even care. Like, I was just like whatever you know she gets her food i don't know how she does it but she, the guys managed to help her um i think at some point they're kind of asking me like what is it and i was like oh she wants to fuck she wants a chicken <laughs> like whatever right so it's her food she's eating kikiing laughing whatever rude manager comes to me like do you really have to give people the request they ask for okay like you can't just be doing that like you don't own this place i'm like i'm following the rules y'all give me because then it's just say that if the owner comes and he sees me fucking up right he's gonna yell he's gonna he's gonna have a fit because he can't control his fucking anger like please like you know it's it's like it's like it was a tug of war between follow the rules and bend the rules but when the manager is here the owner please follow all the rules but also if the owner says to bend the rules a little bit please bend the rules like just the way he says like please frantic ass like he would always be so scared um and that shit just pissed me off uh, piss me off all the time but anyways guys um she eats her food and then she has the audacity to say, at the end of her meal, she gets up, because um, there were tables in the place too. She gets up with her peoples, and she goes, thanks for the uh, service today, or whatever. And I was just like, it's like, and it sounds like, the story sounds so little, and so like, girl, you're being so dramatic, like whatever. It's a little pissy customer with a little attitude. No, it's like. At the time, it really hurts you because you're like, the the fact that, like, my thing with customer service was the fact that you could get out of your face and have it added to with someone you don't know, who clearly doesn't have control of a situation, but you, you clearly feel like you have a bigger control of the situation, and you still want to be disrespectful. Like, things like that just get to me because I get hot and I get angry, and I'm like, you don't have to be rude to people, especially something about, about something that they have no control over. And not only that, but you're coming in here like I'm your and you're telling me what to do when you're not my manager and that's not what we do here okay if she had come in and said oh you know um i don't mean to be a bother but like i have a meat restriction diet and i really would hate if my meat touched the 
the wrap like is there any way please that like you guys can clean it a little bit extra um or like change your gloves and stuff because I, i'm just like like that's the tone not um and when y'all done can y'all change your gloves like there's a difference you see the difference i'm talking about so you know the manager room manager said that bullshit and i was like whatever you know and i talked to robert about it too he's like just do what you feel your heart to tells you to do and just do what's right and just follow the rules because that's what we trained you to do in that style like ignore him because he has an attitude this is a story time of the rudest customer ever like i said she left had her fit said her last words got her got her no no what is that norority i don't even know how to say that to say that word but she got her little cockiness on her ego off and said thanks for the service and left okay and i never saw her again thank god she never came back into there i don't know if she came back after i left that place but uh, it was such a draining day. I, I can't deal. When I have a rude customer, my whole mood goes down and I can't work for the rest of the day. Like, that's how aggressively, that's how badly negative energy impacts me. It just makes me go, and now I'm tired. If you enjoyed that story time, thanks for watching. Um, I didn't stay there for too long at that job, but I had a great time. And yeah, let me know in the comments below if you've ever dealt with a rude customer and how you dealt that. Um, I think I've had more rude customers too, so if you want more story times about that, we can definitely do that. Um, if you also want more story times, if you want that story time about my manager finding that customer, I got you. So comment that down below too. Like the video, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. I didn't even feel like I finished all my food, y'all.